Welcome to RC Scientific. This video gives some more insight into aspects of static torque twist. Recently we explained that static torque twist is generated by the motor torque that is transferred via the axle towards the chassis so that it bends the chassis in longitudinal direction. Torque twist occurs especially when the car is prevented from a free movement but blocked due to a steep slope or a counter force in horizontal direction. But how do the different components of the drive train effect torque twist? The drive train starts with the motor, followed by the spool gear, the main transfer transmission, several ball bearings, before it ends up at frontal and rear differentials and axles. The motor torque without gears and bearings would be transferred to the axles as it is and lead to a bending torque at the axles TA that is equal to the motor torque. Bearings without friction would not change this relationship. However, friction does reduce the torque at the axle by the amount of the friction torque. Gears of the drivetrain usually have a gear ratio that is greater than 1. This means that the outgoing angular speed is downscaled, while the outgoing torque is getting larger by the factor of the gear ratio. This leads to a much larger bending torque at the axle. Note that also the fixation has to be a large torque, which is almost as large as the outgoing bending torque at the axle, but points to the other direction. The LEGO model nicely shows how easy it is to bend the chassis frame when a gear is placed between actuation and chassis frame. For the Traxxas T-Rex 4 chassis, we could calculate the exact axle torque as a function of motor torque knowing the gear ratios of the model. For the first gear, the axle torque is about 8 times larger than the motor torque. Note that the fixation torque is even a little bit larger if the gearbox inverts the outgoing angular speed into the other direction. Thanks for watching RC Scientific.